Let's take a closer look at the main blower assembly from a snow machine. Now, this is the type of snow machine that emulates snow with foam. Like, it basically converts a liquid into tiny little pieces of foam that look like snowflakes, and they blow out the front of the unit with a loud vacuum cleaner type noise. They're very noisy, and that's for a reason. It's pretty much a vacuum cleaner motor in here, as you'll see. But then they uh, blow out the front, they flutter nicely down, and then when they land, they gradually disappear, just like real snow. It's a very good effect. And it's very simple. It makes me wonder who invented this and got ripped off completely by all the Chinese manufacturers. But the process starts with an air unit that uh, is basically, it's a vacuum cleaner type sort of blower, but it's blowing the air through this sock of fabric. This sock of fabric is a very specific type of material designed to pass the liquid and allow it to foam up as the air pushes it through it. The liquid itself is based on water and surfactant and possibly in some instances isopropyl alcohol or something else. But I'm going to leave a lot more in the description down below about the surfactants like, say for instance, sodium lauryl sulfate, cocamidopropyl betaine. Um, there's, I've got various thoughts on those, and it would be quite interesting to know what your thoughts on those are. But the main airflow from this comes through this hole in the middle, and that is what keeps this sock blown rigid, and it also carries liquid out, and there's nothing too fancy. Some of them use an air stone for the liquid. This one literally has a plastic pipe with the liquid going in, and uh, it just basically, it's just pushed into a halfway position, and I suppose it relies almost on the Venturi effect of the air blowing past, shattering the liquid into small droplets, that as the air flows through this, it carries it. Wherever it's uh, not too saturated, the air will pref prefer preferentially go through that area, and it carries the liquid to that, and it ensures this is fairly evenly soaked over the whole surface. The air then continues to push the liquid through the uh, material, and it produces a thick foam on the outside. And this is where the disco foam machines would stop. They wouldn't have anything other than just basically air being blown through the sock and the foam just spewing out the front of the unit. But in this case, there is a second air outlet in the form of these holes around the outside here. And as soon as the foam in the sock gets out into the airflow created by those holes, uh, it gets ripped off as tiny little flakes of foam and blown out the front of the unit. Very neat effect. The liquid is normally supplied in cheap machines. Uh, some uh, of the big commercial machines actually use the Venturi effect. But in the cheapy machines, they often just use a little solenoid pump. And this basically is a, a cylinder inside. And there's a diode uh, in line with it, either on the circuit board or in the actual on the wiring of the pump itself, as in this case. And it means that on a typical sine wave, this is energized for half the sine wave and not energized the other half. And it results in a distinct pulsing action. And you've basically got a little cylinder with a piston in it just pushing in and out. And as it pulls back, liquid uh, flows into the cylinder. And then as it pushes it out, it pushes the liquid out the other end and up to the snow sock. Let's open this up. So it has four screws. Holding it shut. In the hindsight, I should have taken all the spare screwdriver bits out of here because it's making loud rattling noises. There we go. That's it done. So there are four screws holding this on. Well, nuts and bolts, I suppose, really. Well, screws and nuts. And once they're removed, it reveals it's almost disappointing because it's so very standard. It is almost certainly the same device used in vacuum cleaners, especially little handheld ones. But we have the blower. And what we have here is a uh, universal motor with the brushes and the uh, rotor with windings and the, the stator windings. And that is rotating an impeller in here. Now, can I get that off? Give me a moment. I'm going to try and get this off. I don't know if it's glued on or not. Uh, it'd be good to get it off. Give me one moment. Yes, it does come off. It's just pressed on as a friction fit. So here is the rotating uh, centrifugal or centripedal. Is it centrifugal or centripedal? But it's the blower that the air is that goes in here is thrown outwards. And when it's thrown outwards, it enters these little ports here in a because it's actually flowing in a circular motion. 
when it goes in here, those ports then channel it into the motor. And the reason they channel it into the motor is because this motor is doing very heavy duty. It's a very high power motor in a small form, probably for cheapness. And uh, the air that's flowing into this cools the motor first before blowing out the other end. So that is it. Uh, what could go wrong in here, I suppose? Uh, if you left it running long enough, the, br the thing could burn out. Uh, the brushes are not really replaceable, but you know that wouldn't stop a determined dabbler. Uh, but most likely the thing that's going to affect it is uh, corrosion and rust, because these things are very, very wet. Um, so that's fundamentally it. This thing runs with a loud vacuum cleaner type noise, throws the air round in a circular style, comes through, uh, blows out the end, inflates the sock and while also uh, blowing air through it and carrying the liquid out to it from the pump. And then there are the wee holes around the outside that actually then blow the flakes off and that's what creates the snow. Now the pump, I've already featured this in several other videos of how to take them apart. Uh, so you can find that if you do, well, if you search my videos for pump, you'll find what's inside this. Uh, I'd love to take this one apart and show you, but, well, I will take it apart and show you, but there's a bit missing. Because I, I took it apart before making this video and a spring went ping, unexpectedly. Slightly different construction from normal, but that's okay. So here is the, well, I'll zoom down on this. Here is the little cylinder and there is the piston that goes in and out of that cylinder. And there's a little O-ring. This O-ring here is notorious for puffing up and uh, seizing onto the uh, cylinder. It's four millimeter, usually, four millimeter inside diameter, one millimeter uh, core diameter, so six millimeter outside diameter as an O-ring. And you can get replacements. The air in, the water inlet valve, as it pulls back, is a little plastic cap in here that I can't even, oh, there it goes. The, uh, is on a spring, do not take that out, that as the uh, plunger pulls back, liquid uh, is pulled in via that. And then when it pushes out, this outlet port is normally blocked by this spring and plunger pressing against it. But when the plunger comes the opposite direction, it pushes that out the way and lets the liquid flow out. They're very, very simple. And once you've taken them apart, you realize that they're very prone to blocking, particularly in these machines, because it is a water-based liquid. Uh, and they're often stored with that liquid in them and it causes problems. Uh, they're better stored dry, but that's not easy to do. Um, but they are very prone to blocking up and quite often you can just recover them by uh, taking them apart and giving them a good thorough clean. But the first time you do it, you'll discover there's lots of washers and o-rings. This o-ring here is actually just purely to reduce the noise of the vibration and stop it making loud parping buzzing noises. They're quite interesting inside, very simple. It's worth mentioning if the pump does go on yours, go on eBay. You can buy the pumps very cheaply. Um, also, uh, it would be nice to actually use a peristaltic pump in these because that would be a, give a more controllable um, fl flow of the liquid because when you have a variable pump on these, it gives a good variation effect from just a few flakes to a complete flurry. It's quite useful. But it'd be nice to find a way that was much quieter. There are some commercial machines that just have this in a soundproof enclosure with this uh, dampening uh, audio uh, dampening foam. But they're very simple, but a great effect. Really nice. I mean, if you ever just get the whim, I'd, I'd recommend buying one just to play with it because uh, it is a really convincing effect and it's just quite pleasant. So go down into the description down below and I'll give you my thoughts on the secret surfactant formulas.